Today, let's talk about Advantage Plus audience best practices. I wrote a detailed blog post on this as well. Check it out at johnloomer.com slash plus. So Advantage Plus audience is often confused. Many advertisers either don't know what it's doing or that it's on, or they see it, they're scared of it, and they turn it off at every turn. And this is a mistake in both cases. So today I wanna to focus on four primary things. First of all, audience suggestions, what they mean, and whether you should use them. Second, when you should use Advantage Plus audience. Third, when you should use the original audience options. And fourth, how this impacts campaign construction. So first up, Advantage Plus audience is on by default no matter what the objective or optimization. So what happens here is you can provide an audience suggestion and then from there, the algorithm will go as broad as it needs to go to get you as many of that action as you want determined by your performance goal. So do you need an audience suggestion? Now it's debatable whether it's really even necessary, but I also understand the inclination from advertisers who are used to putting something in here wanting to do that. If you're to use Meta's own documentation on how Advantage Plus audience works, AI uses lots of information to find your audience evolving constantly as it learns. And that comes from prior conversions, pixel data, and previous uh, interactions with your ads. So in a way, if you didn't provide any targeting suggestions, any audience suggestions at all, it would just start with what is essentially a broad remarketing campaign. Times when you might want to use audience suggestions would be if you have a brand new pixel or account. So none of that history actually exists to start with. Or if maybe you have lots of different segments that you serve. And so the algorithm could be somewhat confused by all of that history on your account. And at that point, you can segment it with your initial suggestions. So when should you use Advantage Plus Audience? Really, anytime you're optimizing for any type of conversion, you should prioritize this approach, especially if you're optimizing for a purchase. Why would that be? So the performance goal is going to optimize delivery of your ads to get you as many of this optimized action as possible within your budget. In this case, purchases. So if there are any weaknesses in the delivery, in the targeting, the only thing that matters is, are you getting purchases? If not, it's going to adjust. So there are other weaknesses that are going to be a problem because they are low quality actions, but that doesn't happen with purchases. So if you're optimizing for a purchase, use Advantage Plus audience with confidence. Any other type of conversion, at least prioritize this, test it out, monitor the results, make sure that quality isn't a concern, and then it's not because of a weakness within Advantage Plus audience that quality would be a problem. So when should you switch to the original options? Well, yes, you do have this option, switch to original audience options that give you all kinds of warnings because Meta has seen that on average, advertisers who are using Advantage Plus audience over the original options are getting better results. So they're gonna give you this warning to make sure that you know this. So yes, you can switch. And when you do, you're still gonna get that warning at the top. So the biggest issue would be top of the funnel optimization. So that would be things like post engagement, through play, link clicks, landing page view, really anything that's not a conversion for the same reason that you should use Advantage Plus audience if you're optimizing for a purchase or any type of conversion. The algorithm will be primarily focused on getting you as many of that thing as possible within your budget. And yeah, it'll get you lots of this thing, but it's possible it's going to be low quality. Now to be very clear, optimizing for top of the funnel actions is already problematic. But if you don't have any constraints on the targeting at all, at that point, it can really go off the rails, get you all kinds of low quality actions that may seem good on the surface, but not so good when you scrape underneath. So if you are optimizing for something top of the funnel and you wanna use detailed targeting or look like audiences or custom audiences, and you have the option to not expand those audiences too with advantage detailed targeting, advantage look like advantage custom audience, 
the original audiences could make sense in this case, right? Only this case to be very clear because at that point you can kind of refine that targeting so you prevent it from going beyond that original group to find people who are likely to perform that action who may otherwise not be interested at all in what you are promoting. Something else specific to this would be if you are, for an example, you are a female entrepreneur serving other women entrepreneurs. So you want to make sure that your content is only shown to other women. Well, if you use Advantage Plus Audience, the age and gender options are only suggestions. The only tight constraints for audience controls would be a minimum. There is no gender audience control at all, and you can't set a maximum. Maximum won't always be an issue, but I've heard of some situations where it can be. So in this case, if that's a problem, and especially again, top of the funnel, where the algorithm isn't gonna learn, oh, well, men aren't buying, so we'll stop showing it to men. Guess what's gonna happen if you're optimizing for engagement? Men are gonna comment on that post. Men are gonna like it, react, whatever, and the algorithm thinks, oh, that's good. Let's show it to more men. And that could be a problem where you want to add some tight constraints. And then finally, let's talk about campaign construction. So when you're using Advantage Plus Audience, you're basically combining warm and cold targeting in one because it starts with your conversion history, pixel data, all that information, and then goes much broader all within the same ad set. There is no reason to create three, four, five plus ad sets for this targeting because even though the initial targeting, the initial suggested audience may be unique, as soon as it goes beyond that, the only focus of the algorithm is finding people likely to perform that action and your performance goal. And then all those ad sets, it's going to be crazy overlap. It's going to be inefficient. You're going to drive up costs. And also you're going to pre prevent yourself from exiting the learning phase when you could just combine those ad sets and those budgets. All right, so hopefully that helps. Again, Advantage Plus Audience, super powerful. This is just kind of scratching the surface here, but if you want to dive more into these best practices for Advantage Plus Audience, make sure to check out my blog post at johnloomer.com slash plus.